By background, I'm a scripture teacher. So whenever I preach, I try to preach on scripture. But today's is going to be an exception. It's the grandparents of Jesus, so we have to talk a little bit about them, which is difficult because we don't know anything about them. When people ask me, where, do I, where in sacred scripture are their names? They're not in sacred scripture. They're found in a set of books that were written after the New Testament. One of those was called the Gospel of James, written probably around 150 AD. And it was a gospel that wasn't accepted because it presented Jesus in a way that was a little strange. You've heard of those stories, baby Jesus playing with clay, makes clay birds and makes them fly away. So the kids laugh at Jesus and he strikes them dead. And the parents of the kids come to complain to uh, Joseph and he strikes them mute. And Joseph says, you've been a bad boy. And Jesus looks up and says, watch out, old man, or you're next. <laughs> These are the books that weren't accepted into the Bible. But that's the only place where we find the name Joachim and Anne. And interestingly enough, in Europe, during the Middle Ages, during the Renaissance, when they wanted to talk about Mary, they went to those books to have an idea of what they should paint. For example, if you ever get to Padua in Italy, Padua where St. Anthony is buried, there's a chapel there. It's called the Arena Chapel, Arena, A-R-E-N-A. If you want to copy the name down, I'll be at the door after Mass. Go to Google and look at the images. It's a beautiful story of the life of Mary presented by a famous artist called Giotto. Giotto they say was really the beginning of the Renaissance in Italy. He's the first one who, who gave up the Byzantine style of pictures, you know, where it's an icon. And he started uh, painting in background, shepherds, movement, different colors. And so we see that one of the first attempts at the Renaissance in the story of Mary. Now, what can this feast teach us? Well, it certainly has, causes us to reflect on the role of being a grandparent. What does it mean to be a grandparent today? One of the first things I can think of is that you are the people who have the time and energy to be filled with wonder at your grandkids. The parents are working hard. It's harder for them to just look at the grandchild and be filled with wonder. And besides, the parents are way too close, right? <laughs> you get to see them on good occasions, and that's part of your job. Part of your job is to give them a good example. For example, no swearing in front of them. Especially if they're small kids, those are the first words they'll pick up. And they're going to go back to their home and swear to their parents. <laughs> so no swearing, no prejudices expressed through them, we try to give them a good example. We try to share our example of faith. I remember when I was a little kid, my grandmother took me to see Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna, New York. It's a beautiful basilica. And she was the one who taught me how to make the sign of the cross with holy water. I was that young. Share our faith. Now, Sharing our faith gets a little bit fuzzy because how many of our grandkids, the parents are not sharing the faith? And what do we do with that? At the very least, we pray for them. We don't apologize for being Catholic. That we go to mass and give them a good example. And, and sometimes we give them religious objects as, as the birthday present. Now, admittedly, They'll appreciate the religious objects as much as tube socks. <laughs> but you never know. Because again, I still have a little holy card of the Sacred Heart that I got when I was four years old. We keep these things and some, sometime, when it's the right time, God will speak through these things and knock on the door. So we do the best we can 
Of course, we never insult the parents or criticize the parents in front of the grandkids, even when we see things that just don't seem right. We want to be people who support, who build up, who help that grandchild be what we think that ch grandchild should be. And if the grandchild is messing up badly, all the more reason we should pray, because we believe in the power of prayer. We might not see the results, but we believe that once we've prayed, we've expressed our love in words. And that love, our love, joins God's love and visits the person for whom we're praying. They might not know it, but they'll know it. Remember, God is not a Jesuit. God's a Franciscan. <laughs> and maybe that's the greatest act of hope we can make, that our prayers are not just words in the wind, but there's something that expresses love and shares love, and love always changes reality. They did an experiment with preemie babies in the hospital. Some of the babies were picked up and caressed. Other babies were not. The children who were caressed thrived. The children who weren't didn't. Prayer is a spiritual caress.